Um, thank you so much for join, joining us at Ready Tech Go. This training is called Bringing Literacy to Life with GarageBand. I have a co-host in here, Jamie Hansen, who's gonna be um, handling the chat, helping answer questions as well. So I'm very happy to have him in here with us. I just wanna kind of go over a little bit about what we do in our district. Um, I am from, well, Jamie and I are both from San Antonio Independent School District. Um, our vision is to engage our students in local and global communities as emotionally intelligent citizens, creators, critical thinkers, and collaborators. And I know that that's a similar vision um, in other districts if you're joining us from another one. And then our personal mission in our department is really to empower students along with teachers. Um, we wanna encourage them to um, learn about quality learning experiences and seamless access to digital and physical resources. So we really push student driven and real world, real world learning in our department. Um, and that really goes in line perfectly with T-TEST. So we always like to think about how is this important to me? Um, this training does touch on 1.1 with planning those student centered activities. Um, so just know that when you are incorporating GarageBand, I am going to go into how you can use it best to be able to get your students engaged um, with the learning. So a little bit about me. My name is Celeste Cavena. I am an ed tech instructional specialist in our district. Um, I have taught in education um, or worked in education for 16 years. I've had the pleasure of teaching every grade level in my certification. So I also did that consecutively to be able to see the vertical alignment with what I've been teaching. I've taught all of the different subjects, self-contained, and also with um, emphasis on math and reading. Um, and currently I am an ed tech instructional specialist in the district and Apple products are one of my passions. So that's why I'm really excited to be able to share how we can bring GarageBand into our classroom. For those of you that may have joined us a little bit later, if you do have access to an iPad, if you can grab that, um, make sure you have GarageBand on it because a little bit later, we are gonna have the opportunity to get our hands on the, um, our devices. So here's a quick agenda. I know we only have about 40 minutes together. I'm gonna go over for those of you that are newbies to GarageBand, what is GarageBand? Uh, I'm gonna give you some ideas to be able to integrate it into um, bringing in that literacy component, but also I know that you may also see some stuff that's happening in GarageBand and think, oh, I can apply that in a different subject area. This one is just gonna be um, really focused on literacy. Um, also, what are some TEKS that GarageBand can support? So I've already done the work and I found some of the standards that I think best fit with using GarageBand for your very first time. Um, I have had the opportunity to be able to use it using poetry. So you're gonna see me referencing that a lot and using that as a way to kind of get your students introduced to GarageBand and how you can do that. Um, I am gonna do a little tutorial. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the most important parts of using GarageBand. Um, basically the tools that you'll need to be able to stay afloat um, when you use this in your classroom. And then I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to use it in your classroom, how to implement it. Um, I have used it a couple of times recently. So there have been some new advances in Apple Classroom that have made it so much easier um, to be able to do something like this. And then I will close it out with the lesson example. I'll take your questions and share some resources that I have um, if you're really interested in bringing this in further. And again, if you have any questions, you can put them into the chat. Um, I appreciate everyone um, honoring our ear space and muting themselves. So thank you for joining us. Um, GarageBand. So first of all, GarageBand is amazing. It turns your iPad into a collection of touch instruments and a full featured recording studio. So your students can take their tablet and they can work in a station. Um, they can go to a quiet space in the school, maybe the library to be able to do some. It really depends on the grade level that you're doing GarageBand with. Um, but for the very first time that they get into GarageBand, um, it's, it's a lot for them. So sometimes they just want to bang around on it like animals from the Muppets. So just kind of sharing some ideas on how you can do this in your classroom. Some ways that you can integrate this, um, not only using literacy, so you can even think outside of 
of the box with other subjects as well. Um, these are some ways that I've seen it used. Podcasting is super easy and fun to be able to do on GarageBand. Um, I know our students nowadays, they really like having themselves out there. They like making their TikToks, they like making their videos, they like their Flipgrid, they like just taking pictures of themselves. So podcasting, um, you could do video podcasting, you can do audio podcasting. Um, but using GarageBand, you can add even more to what your students are creating. Um, turning text into audiobooks. So this is a great way of putting some worth behind what your students are doing by having them take text and turning it into an audiobook for students that may not be able to read. So for example, taking those upper grade students and having them create something for the lower grade students. Um, you could also create songs to synthesize information learned. So thinking about that across subject um, you have that opportunity to be able to really gauge what your students understand about a topic um, just based on songs that they create and they get to use that creative energy. Um, and the, the younger they are, the better it would be to have them partner up or group up, um, you know, as teachers, your students and their ability level. So just making sure that you support all students. These are some of the relevant standards that I found to support literacy and GarageBand. I know that fluency was something when I was in second, third grade um, that was really hard for my students to understand what I meant by um, being a fluent reader. So giving them opportunities to hear themselves read, but also having the flexibility to enhance what they're reading. So adding sound effects to enhance the mood for something that they're reading. Um, but the big thing is they're able to hear themselves and they're able to um, understand that what they just heard isn't what they would typically want to hear. So these, flu these are the fluency standards um, across the different grade bands. I know that this training is primarily going to fifth grade, but I know that there are some sixth and eighth grade students that can also benefit from that. And actually, as you get into middle school, you can even throw in um, other literacy standards that would complement um, this as well. So just wanted to share some of those with you and just know that I will share this presentation at the very end. If I ever go too fast, just know that you can always take a look at this. This is also being recorded. Um, so you can watch this at a later time if you would like to. So before we get our iPads opened up, I just wanna share some of the things that I'm gonna show you how to do. I'm gonna show you how to turn off the metronome and extend the track. And these things are really gonna impact your students right away um, because the metronome sound is something that they are like, well, why I'm trying to, I'm trying to read with the sound of the metronome. I'm like, no, you don't have to. So I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to record audio, um, create a new track, um, split and edit a recording. I'll show you how to add and move sounds on a track, adjust sound levels, add sound packs, and share recordings. So with that said, um, if you can grab your iPad, I'm going to stop sharing this screen, and I'm going to share the screen of my iPad. Um, if you are not sure what the GarageBand logo looks like, I'm just going to show you what that looks like one more time. Um, right here. So go ahead, grab your iPad, and then you will see the screen change in just a minute to my iPad screen. All right. So if you are with me, and if not, I understand. I know a lot of people turn in devices in the summertime. Um, this is my iPad home screen. So I'm going to go ahead and show you GarageBand. So I'm opening up GarageBand. Now, because I already have some pro projects created, um, that shows up in the recent. If this is your very first time launching GarageBand, you're probably going to see something that looks like this. Um, and basically what this is, is what type of track do you want to start with? And so think about tracks as um, if you're doing podcasting, you can think about it as your audio track, which is why I have it straight on audio record. Um, if your students are creating a song, they may want to go through and start with a beat, maybe start with a keyboard. Um, it's really up to them. You know, the older they get, the more freedom they can have. I think with creating, they don't feel as overwhelmed. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you with the audio recorder um, what that looks like to be able to get into GarageBand. So I'm starting here, just tap it, loads it up. As you can see, it's picking up my audio right now. Um, you can come over here and adjust some of the settings, maybe turn the tone down, 
for your lower grade students. They absolutely love when you click on fun, you already have some different um, fil filters for the audio that make it sound a certain way. So I know that um, my students really enjoyed playing around with these and you can always change these later. Um, but again, I just wanna kind of share what this would be like if you're doing this in your classroom for the first time, you don't wanna to overwhelm them, just like I don't want to really overwhelm y'all. Um, but I will share resources that will be able to help you um, at the very end if this is a lot for you, because but you're interested in it. All right, so I'm gonna come back to my, so pretend like I recorded something uh, because I, I don't want to take too much time on this. So I have this teacher example here. So every time you record a track, just like you saw that audio recorder, it's gonna come to the top. So if you see, I've highlighted what looks like a microphone. That was my very first track that I recorded using that interface that you just saw. And this was some of the audio I put. Now these things that follow are actual other audio tracks, but I wanted to show you a couple of things up here. Um, on the top right-hand corner, you'll see what looks like a metronome. If you're not familiar with what a metronome looks like, it looks like a little triangle with a little line coming through it. Um, and what that does, it'll just sound, it'll count off the beat. Um, but that's not necessarily something that you need to have on for your students. So I would turn that off. Um, the other thing that most important thing that you need to do is make sure you extend the track because if your students don't do this after eight bars, and these are bars where you see the numbers at the top, um, it'll just stop their recording. And so I found students would try to get all of their reading done in eight bars, which was not the best. So coming over again to the top right hand corner, you'll see, um, you'll see a little plus sign and I'm gonna see, let me change my screen so that I can get the pointer. Okay, got my pointer. So right over here, the top, you'll see um, the plus sign. When you click on that plus sign, you wanna make sure that it says automatic. So I'd already changed mine to be automatic. Um, the usual one it has is eight bars. And yes, you can add it. So say you did wanna control how long your student's track was, but again, the easiest thing to do is just make it automatic um, because your students will be able to record all of their audio. It will not cut them off. The other thing I wanted to show you um, is how to be able to, if you've already recorded one track, to be able to record another. Um, you have a couple of different places that you can do that. So you can actually come down to the bottom left-hand corner where you see the plus sign. And when you click that, you see the screen come up again. And again, this is just another track. So it's not gonna delete anything that you've done. It's just gonna add to it. So think about layers. Um, so if I wanted to record my audio here, again, you can adjust those levels after you record something. And so for this one, I will just record what I'm saying right now, just to kind of show you, you hear the metronome. And that's the other audio I had recorded. So right there, I've recorded a little bit more than two bars. And I love the math connection with that as well, because you can see um, fractional parts. So I clicked over here, if you're wondering, how does it keep switching? I use this tool a lot over here, it looks like squares, three squares. And that takes you from um, the view that you just saw back to the view where you can see the different layers. Um, I have the track that I just recorded right here that I don't really wanna keep, but what I wanna show you is how to be able to split and edit it. So say I did wanna include this in my track, what I could do is I'm gonna click on this little microphone. I'm gonna click, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do split and, split and edit, I apologize. To split and edit, you just double click the track and you see split show up right there. And then you see scissors, you can actually move your scissors where you wanna cut it. And I'm gonna cut out all that white space. When you're ready to cut, all you're gonna do is slide down with your finger where you want it to cut. And voila, it's cut. 
Um, so now that you've learned how to split, if you want to edit this track, so I want to remove this part, double tap, delete. I can take this one and I can move it around. So if I wanted to add this sound to the very beginning, maybe I wanna take that antique car horn that you heard um, and make it shorter. I can shorten it just by moving the track like that. If it's a recording of audio, you'll notice that I can't extend it. But in a little bit, I'm gonna show you how you can add other sounds um, and how that can change. So. I've created this one just to show you how to be able to do this. If I look over here at the top right-hand corner, what looks like a little loop-de-loo, -loo, if you click on that, this is actually gonna open up Sound Library. So if I click over here on Apple Loops, it gives me all different types of sounds. Now you may want something very specific for a mood, um, when I did this with students, I did it with poetry. So they were able to um, pick song sounds that were appropriate for what they wanted to do. So you can actually come over to genres and you can pick a genre for that. Um, you can pick instruments. So you can filter out the type of sounds or you can just give your students a chance to kind of go through and listen to the different options that are available to them. Um, and when they want to add it, all they have to do, and I'm just going to find one, let's do, I'm going to move this one over. And as you can see, it added a whole separate track. And if I wanted to edit it again, make it shorter, I could. If I wanted to take this same track and do another one, just like it, copy, paste. And if you notice, it pasted it where this long cursor is. So just know this is the place. So if I were to take it and move it here and say paste here, it would paste it right there, okay? Um, the other friend that you'll have while you're doing this is the undo. So I'm gonna undo, undo. So anytime you make a mistake, don't panic, just undo. And I think that's something that most teachers know very well. Um, when working with students, just teaching them the power of undo um, so they don't panic. Um, now, if I wanted to adjust sound levels, maybe fade something in, I want to highlight the track. And then when I double tap, oops, I'm sorry. When I double tap, ah, okay, here we go. Last time's a charm. can click on it and you click on automation and then you see a whole lot more of your track and if you notice you have these little yellow dots these are going to help you find the point when you want to start your um, fade in or fade out so maybe I want to come over here I don't want to mess with that one so it's white right now I'm gonna make it bigger. Oh, over here on the top right hand corner, I need to make sure I unlock this. All right, now here we go back in business. Did you notice why I put that dot right here? And now I can come over to this yellow dot over here and I can actually adjust the sound just like that. So now instead of it coming in loudly like a car horn, I can hear it come in quietly. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my editing off so you can hear it. So maybe I wanted to go back and change that again. This is how you do it. Top left-hand corner locks and unlocks this, the track to be able to give you that flexibility to adjust the sound levels. Um, looking at the time, I just wanna make sure that I get to everything else. Um, so we talked a little bit about this. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this and take us back to our track. So done over in the top right-hand corner. Now I'm back at my track. 
Um, if I wanted to add more sound packs, so your iPad already comes with some, but again, going back to the loop-de-loop, -loop, you can come over to get more Apple loops, and there are so many free Apple loops available. Um, the one that I recommend making sure your students have are the toy box one, as you can see, it's already downloaded because that's going to have a lot of sound effects for your students to be able to enhance um, what they do. So that's one of the things that you can get free download on your iPad for your students. Um, the other thing is you've created your track and now it's time to be able to share it. So the thing I love about Apple is they give you plenty of options. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go back to my file library. And so that was, let me take you back there because I didn't click on it right here. Um, the little, what looks like a page over here or a file. When you click on it, it takes you back to your file library. When you are ready to share something, I see a hand, Rose, you have a question? Um, yes, I can't hear your sounds that you're playing from your computer. Like your- oh, Yeah, from, from the garage band? Yes. That was my fault. Let me let me stop share, share again so that I ensure that I include the audio part. Thank you, Rose. I'm sorry that you had to go through that without hearing. Um, so let me go ahead and stop my share really quick. All right, so now the sound is fixed, but I really just want to show you at this point how to share. Um, so when you are in this screen, we want to click select, click on teacher example or the one that you wanna share. And then if you notice, you have a couple of options down here. You wanna click on share. I like for the song to be shared, but if you're still working on something, you can share it as a project. Maybe you have a classmate that wants to add it, add to it, or maybe a student wants you to take a look at it before they submit it. So that would be when you would send a project. But overall, sound is the best way to be able to share. Um, pick your highest quality that you want. I usually do this one in the middle. Um, make sure they change this part because I found the easiest way for students to share their product if you're not using an LMS or you're not using um, like say like a, a program that's easy to be able to share files like your students aren't connected with Google Drive. Um, Airdropping has been incredible with students turning in projects. Um, so this that's where this my info part really comes into play because you want your students to be able to make sure they put their name here before they share it with you via say Airdrop. So I'm going to go ahead and click share just to show you some of the options. And like I said, AirDrop is my preferred way of having my students share. Um, but as you can see, you do have other options like you have your Google Drive there, which is another one I think is really, um, really helpful. You can also share it on your Mac so that you can access it when you're, say, creating something in iMovie. Um, but again, I think AirDrop is the best way to be able to share these files with you with the teacher. Um, so now that I've gone through how to share the recording, I just want to go back to my actual um, presentation to share some stuff that I have for you to be able to make this implementation really work for you. I see right now there are some people in the chat. I hear it now. I'm so sorry, Bonnie. <laughs> you should be able to hear it. <laughs> okay, let me come back to my screen. All right, so what I did create, and again, I'm sharing this presentation with you. Um, I know for me, one pagers like this are really helpful. So this is something that can help you just see what each of the different icons means. Um, I put some pointers with adding tracks or like I said, a couple of different places that you can do that, the adding tracks, um, that undo button, um, play and record. So all of the most important things are gonna be found on this page. But like I said, Apple also offers amazing support and I'll share that with you as well. So how to implement this in your classroom. 
First of all, if you're doing what I did where you're attaching it with fluency, I found poetry is the best way because a lot of times um, poems are gonna be shorter. So it's less overwhelming for students. You can also get a good gauge of their fluency from a poem. Um, so just know that poetry is what I would start with. Um, and pre-selecting your poems to make sure they're relevant for the abilities of your students is key, especially if you're trying to hit that fluency standard because um, if students have poems that are too easy, you're not gonna get an accurate representation of how fluent of a reader they are. Um, so pre-select them because sometimes students will pick poems that are too short and then they won't really be able to explore as often. Set up Apple Classroom. If you have not set up Apple Classroom for your, um, your entire classroom, please do that. It'll make your life so much easier. You won't have all these extra gray hairs um, if you set up Apple Classroom beforehand because you'll be able to lock student devices when you need to. You'll be able to see where students are working without having to be right behind them breathing down their um, neck. So setting up Apple Classroom is key. Um, Apple has a lot of really helpful um, ways of doing that. So I don't have a training on Apple Classroom, but just know that there are some really awesome ones available through Apple. Um, of course, ensure GarageBand is loaded on your iPad because I know that in our district, if an app isn't used often, it will offload it. So just making sure it's downloaded prior to trying to get this started in your classroom. Create a teacher example. I know y'all weren't really able to hear my teacher example because of my audio issue. Um, but when you have a teacher example, you'll, your students will be able to get a better idea of how the tracks work, um, what your intention is with the activity as well. So teacher examples, super key and also very fun to make because GarageBand is a lot of fun. Um, but also identify how you want your students to share the project when they are done. So do you want them to share it the way I do with AirDrop? Or did you want them to use Google Drive? Because you may be, um, your students may be more familiar with that. So you decide that before you get started with your implementation. Some other tips for success, make sure your students have headphones because um, it's very difficult to be able to record things when you hear a lot of other sounds, even if you have a very large classroom and your students are spread apart, headphones are super important. Um, again, I cannot say it enough, Apple Classroom, Apple Classroom, Apple Classroom, because the ability to lock and unlock iPads is really important with something like GarageBand because it's fun and they're going to want to do it. So. Um, being able to lock their iPads to give them the information that will help them so that they are not asking you the same question over and over is really helpful. So again, Apple Classroom. Give your students time to explore. Just the way we are as adults, it's fun to be able to try something out first and then kind of get your um, your wiggles out with a garage band, you know, be able to play with the drums, play with the guitar. I think a lot of kids see it. It's visually appealing um, and they're going to want to just tap this, tap that, click here. What's this? And so just giving them time to explore. I gave my students about 10 minutes of free time to explore the different tracks. And then I included a scavenger hunt for those students that needed a little, a little more structure. Um, and then when that timer went off, I locked their iPads and it was really great because it showed students that I had that ability. So they knew that, okay, well, if she says to stop, I'm going to stop. So you may not have to do, have to be as structured later on with using GarageBand if you set that expe expectation early on. Um, screen share those tricky steps. So if you don't have a smart board to be able to screen share to, just finding a way to connect it to your projector or finding a way to share it with your Elmo or whatever way to be able to show your students the tricky steps. And those tricky steps could include adding another track or splitting a track or changing the audio levels. Um, so those would be the times to really show them the screen share. Or if you hear the same question more than once, that's a great opportunity to step back and say, let me do a screen share for that. Um, the lower you go with GarageBand and the grade levels, the more important it is to kind of chunk it up for them. Um, I know sometimes towards the end of the year, you have a little bit more freedom with time to be able to give more time to this. Um, but in reality, I know what the classroom schedules are like. So being able to break it into chunks is really helpful. 
Um, and I will show an example of what that would look like if you need some ideas on getting started with that. So now I have some examples and I'll take some questions as well. Um, but I wanted to be able to share, this is the, what the, the scavenger hunt was that I did with the fourth graders that I did this um, poetry and literacy training, not training, <laughs> co-teaching with the librarian. Um, so I kind of showed them how to get to the tracks and then just let them explore. Get to the guitar, see if you can find smart guitar, get to the bass, see if you can find scales. Um, this is great just kind of showing them what's out there because a lot of times I'm gonna be completely honest, they'll find the drums or keyboard and they wanna just stay there. The drums, you know, just the acoustic ones, just being able to tap it. I mean, it's fun, it's, it's very relaxing as well. Um, same with the keyboard, but introducing them to the other part as well is key because they're gonna need to know that they have these options when they create later. So here's an example of the second grade lesson that I created. Um, in this lesson, I broke up GarageBand with poetry for five days. So really the first day was sharing the teacher example, letting them play with the app um, and then picking their poetry the poem that they wanted to use and begin practicing with their fluency. So they're not even really recording anything yet on that very first day. And again, I will share this presentation with you. You'll be able to take a closer look at it um, to be able to see how you can possibly break it up for, for your students as well. Um, I did take some pictures of those fourth graders that I did this lesson with um, just to kind of share what it would look like. Um, because they were fourth graders, this was their very first time ever using iPads because they're uh, a Chromebook campus. They um, partnered up or did groups of three. So they found their poems, pre-selected the poetry. As you can see, they really liked the, um, the sounds that were not just the normal audio sounds. And you'll find your lower students do like that but they had a blast recording. And it's really funny because students are not, kids are not afraid to make mistakes like adults are. So they were over there like adding tracks, trying to add different loops. And I hadn't even showed them all, um, all of these things. So they're not afraid to click around. Um, some other resources that I have, and I am also gonna drop these in the chat, but just know that um, when I share the presentation, I have also included, um, it is a, it as a PDF, so you will actually have the opportunity to click on these and it'll take you directly to these books. And these are free books that Apple creates. Um, and they're really awesome because they actually show you step-by-step -step how to do some of this stuff. Um, it has, there are teacher guides and this is, these two over here on the left side, the one that says everyone can create teacher guide for early learners and that everyone can create teacher guide. Um, those are gonna be for all different types of creative um, things that Apple has. It's not necessarily just GarageBand, but it does touch on GarageBand. So if you need some tips, if you're a second grade, third grade teacher, I would really recommend looking at the early learner one. Um, if you are fourth, fifth grade teacher, maybe checking out this one. And if you are an adult that wants to get better at GarageBand on your iPad before you do it with your students, this one is super fun to do. It breaks it up into pro uh, projects for you to be able to work with. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop these different links in the chat for you. And these are to the books everyone can create. And if you have Apple products, um, each of these is going to have, um, again, free, it'll download it into your Apple books for you. Um, super amazing resource to be able to use. I myself um, and do, am doing the Apple, the music one as well, and I'm having a blast with it um, as I become an Apple certified coach. Um, this next link that I'm dropping in the chat is for this whole presentation, so you can download it if you need it. Um, and it is gonna be available for you to be able to zoom in, make copies, click on the links as you need. Um, but I do know that some of you may have some questions and I wanted to give y'all the opportunity to ask those questions. Um, while we're doing that, if you notice right there, we have our bit.ly, this is our attendance sign-in. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in the chat as well. Um, and if you, you can fill out that attendance form. We will give you credit for this session. 
Um, and I will be looking in the chat if you have any questions or if you wanna come off mute um, to ask them, now is the time or forever hold your peace because we do have about um, seven minutes left to be able to ask those questions and sign in. I was just curious if you can replay the teacher example so I can see what all of it looks like or sounds like together. Sure, sure. Just don't judge me too much, too harshly. Okay. It'll be great. It'll um, so, be <laughs> okay, I will go ahead and reshare that. Um, just know that for those of you that are using this one to type in, just know I put it in the chat as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stop share. I'm going to share my iPad. All right, so we are back over here. I'm going to go ahead and click on my teacher example. And the other thing is you can pinch to make it smaller. So I typically, when I want to see an overview, I'll pinch it so I can see everything on the screen. Um, but here we go. This is a test on how to record your audio. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. So that was the example. Were y'all able to hear that one? I know I hear some construction here, so I wasn't sure. Yes, that was great. Okay. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, um, I didn't spend a lot of time. This was just to show the fourth graders how to record the audio. Um, but if you wanted to do like a, a poem, again, you could always split and edit the track, re-record a part. I know for me, I was always really particular if I read something incorrectly, um, instead of re-recording the whole thing, editing is really awesome. So again, um, if anybody has any questions about the iPad aspect, I do have it open. So I'm available to be able to, to help y'all with any more of those questions. Hey, Celeste. This yes. Is, this is Bonnie Taylor. I just want to tell you that this uh, dead air on my part is not because I don't have questions or that I'm really seriously overwhelmed, but I just wanted to, you know, this has been really fantastic, but I really can't wait to go back and look at the presentation and then play around myself. And then yeah. um, we'll have questions, but so you're talking about the support that they offer. Um, mm -hmm. Can you kind of go over that a little bit more? What kind sure. of- Sure, so yeah, let me see, I'm on, I have, I'm on an, a Mac right now. So I'm just gonna show you what Apple Books looks like um, on a Mac, but just know it's the same a very similar to be able to see what it looks like because I want to be able to show you how they scaffold for teachers. Um, well, really for anybody. So let me go ahead and stop my share with this one. Okay, so right here is, and this is one of the resources that I shared. Um, these are the everyone can create. So I'm going to start with this one right here. Okay, here we go. So it'll break it up into the different um, areas for this one. This one is geared more towards the uh, younger students. So it'll talk about, in each of these, if you notice, it says go to projects for rhythm and beats, chords and songs. Um, it tells you a little bit about what you can do. So for example, we talked about recording your voice. When you click on the project right there, it literally walks you through step by step and Apple books are super cool because you're able to you know click through these to be able to see the steps here if you need that extra help pop it out it gives you lots of helpful more detailed way more detailed than I gave y'all um, but just notice it has all of this and again each of these if you see these here it'll go through step by step with how to do that it highlights where to find that as well and like I said, I really encourage playing around with this. It's fun. <laughs> and um, thinking about, you know, it's summertime for a lot of teachers right now, or ICs, admin, um, but being able to create a welcome back to school, you know, just a little preview of what's to come for students is really cool. Um, but I do know we don't have a lot of time left. We have about one minute left before our session is over. Um, one last thing that I'm going to put in the chat is I am going to put my email as well. If you need something, I will be away from my computer for June. I will be traveling, um, but I will answer those questions. Or if you can't find where to get that presentation again, um, just email me and I will share that with you. I hope that today's session was helpful for you. I really appreciate everybody's patience with my technical difficulties. And I hope that y'all have an awesome time playing around with GarageBand. 
And if you email me, I would love to see some of the stuff that your students or you have created and implemented in your classroom. But thank you so much for attending the session. I hope you have more fun at Ready Tech Go. Um, I'm not, I'm not on uh, any TCA, TCEA groups right now, Bonnie. But you can email me if you want to connect because I, like I said, I love making connections with teachers and I absolutely love seeing teacher examples so that I can take them back to my, my campus as well. All right, well, thank you everyone.